basically you just have to like push it in with superhuman strength and like ruin your thumb pad. After many tries and much frustration I was able to get it on. Jeez, do not want to do that again. Welcome back to Not Enough Projects. Today we're back on the 90 Super Duty. Today we're going to be fixing the clutch pedal. So let's get on it. So this is apparently a chronic issue on 90s uh, Ford diesels. They used the same master cylinder as the gas trucks. So with the heavier pressure needed for the diesel clutch, the plastic bushing that goes between the pedal and the master cylinder wears out. And the symptoms we're seeing is you have to really push it into the floor to get the starter to engage. If you're just like here, it won't engage. And the clutch is also releasing like right here, really low. And also it doesn't seem to even be releasing all the way because it grinds downshifting into second. Yeah, not happening. I should just not even try. That's all the symptoms we're seeing. So we have this part, which the previous owner of the truck threw in. It replaces the plastic bushing part. You have to cut the end off the master cylinder. You slide this on there and then the uh, grub screw screws into it. So we're gonna get that done right now. Let's start tearing into it. All right, well, here is our clutch master. You can see that bushing on there, which actually is looking okay, which is not a good sign. <laughs> uh, you see there's a little bit of play in the bushing, but it's not the worst. There's probably, well, I don't know, a half inch of play on, on the pedal side. You can see there is some play on the clutch master before it starts working some dead space. Hopefully our clutch isn't worn. Yeah, I mean, there's a fair amount of play in there. So we can give it a try. See if, I mean, it'll be an improvement at least. All right, so there is some slop in that bushing, but it's not like a catastrophic failure like you'll see when it really causes problems. Uh, I think what we'll do is have somebody press the clutch pedal just to where the dead space stops. We're going to go under the truck and look at the slave cylinder. And if it's moving when we're doing this, then we'll know we probably have a worn out clutch. Um, but if it's not moving, then this could be air in the system or a failed master. Just because the master cylinder piston is moving, it's just not doing anything for the first two inches. Go ahead. Are you doing it? Okay, press it just past. Okay, yeah, so. All right, so we either got air in the system or the master has issues. So the inspection cover is missing, which actually gives us an opportunity to look at the clutch, and it actually doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good, actually. And now that I think about it, if it were a worn clutch, we would actually experience a high clutch release because the clutch is so thin that even just a little bit of travel would release the clutch. So that's good at least. I'm kind of thinking that our issue is a combo between that worn linkage and maybe some air in the system because we have such a, uh, like it's like a two inch dead space before we actually start seeing any movement on the slave cylinder. So maybe we will try bleeding the clutch just a touch see if that helps us out at all uh, and then we can go from there let's start off by checking our master cylinder fluid level Ooh. oh man that cap's not coming off i'm gonna need pliers or i guess a strapper which will do too and i guess try bleeding all right i don't know how much of that really showed anything that we were doing but the bleeding didn't seem to make a huge difference i mean there's probably about the same amount of play I mean, I guess I could start it up and see if the clutch release is any better. Kind of doubt it though. Um, yeah, so let me do some thinking. Okay, so looking at it again, I mean, there maybe is a little bit too much free play, but I think it's about as good as we're gonna get. So maybe we will try uh, putting in the heim joint and see where that puts us because it'll take out a little bit more of the play i think it's about that much so 
We'll see. And we'll take it out, test it, make sure it still downshifts in a second. We could always have a worn synchro or something along those lines, so, you know, I'm not too concerned. I mean, the clutch feels like it pretty much fully disengages now. I did run it and just try shifting through the gears. It doesn't grind into reverse or anything weird like that. So let's switch this heim joint in. All right, so we're replacing our heim joint. Or installing our heim joint isn't too crazy of a job. We're just gonna need to come down here and let me see if I can get a little bit better light in here. We we'll just need to come down in here and pop the clutch master arm off of the pedal assembly. And see our slop. So this should definitely make an improvement. Um, so we'll pop that off the pedal assembly. Gonna need to grab a screwdriver or something. And then we're also gonna need to undo the safety switch. Which I'll need two hands for, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna use the screwdriver, pop the uh, clutch master linkage right off, and then unplug the neutral safety switch or clutch safety switch. And then we're gonna go under the engine bay and pull the clutch master into the engine bay. Okay, there we are. Got our linkage pulled off. You can see some wear on the the arm there. Let's pull the plastic bushing off the clutch master arm. And you can see we were worn through. That's very common. All right, now we should be good to pull the clutch master out into the engine bay. We will need to remove the swing arm for the clutch, but we'll come back and do that. So to remove the clutch master, we're gonna remove those two half inch nuts right there and there's one up top. That's a little harder to show. And then we should be able to pull it out. All right, we got the two nuts off. They're actually 13 millimeters. Not a fun job, they're in there pretty tight, especially that upper one. I'm not sure. Looks like our parking thing is hanging us up. Not park, sorry, neutral safety. Let's see if we can finagle it out from the inside. Getting hung up on the connector. I wonder if it needs to come off first. There we go. You gotta kinda twist it to Make it fit through the opening. Okay. So here we are. Oh, we got a plate back here. Oh, I wonder. I have heard these trucks are prone to, well, all diesel trucks, Ford manual diesel trucks were prone to cracking the firewall because it was not strong enough for the clutch. So I bet you this is a reinforcement for that. So we gotta make sure we get that back in. Anyways, here we are on the master. So now it's time to get to cutting. You know, actually, before we get to cutting, let's get our clutch swing arm out. So it's held in with an 18 millimeter nut. It's, a, it's this thing. And then it's gonna be way up there. I don't think I can show you guys. Maybe I can. It's way up here. You can see it peeking out, just right there. Now it is splined, but when you get them new, they aren't splined. It cuts splines in them when you bolt it down. So you don't need to mark it because we're gonna have the clutch pedal all the way up, the master bolted down, and then we're going to bolt the swing arm where it wants to lay. So we don't need to mark it. I'm gonna do that off camera because it's kind of a tight in here, so. See you guys when I get it off. Okay, now we've got the nut off. We are going to need to use a pry bar to kind of pry it out, because like I said, it cuts splines into the swing arm when you bolt it down, so it's a pretty snug fit. So I'm just going to wedge a pry bar in between and pop it off. Alright, that was a lot more stubborn than expected. What ended up being the ticket was uh, vice grips on there, wiggling it back and forth, and also threw some WD on the splines and that ended up helping out a lot. So we got it out. We're going to need to grind off the stud, which actually looks like it might be press fit, so we might be able to just use the the press to press it out. Let's see how much wear we got going on. Some. 
nothing crazy though like you'll see sometimes but I mean the bushing was totally shot so gonna be a big difference hopefully all right let's go press this out we'll see if it presses easy out we may end up needing to uh, grind it yeah it's not coming out very easy so yep it needs grinded so that's okay it's probably like riveted in or something like that or like a rivet style connection oh it was coming we should need to keep going all right I thought it wasn't moving at all. Okay, well maybe I don't recommend this method if you're wanting to reuse the swing arm because it did kind of mushroom it a little bit. Because uh, we probably should have cut off this end before. It's a little wider, which is kind of interesting, but I think it's going to work out okay. So we'll just need to hammer it the rest of the way, I guess. Alright, let's try the air hammer. Gotta tell ya, an air hammer is one of those tools I didn't know I needed until I had it. Highly recommend it. Alright, I'm gonna use an angle grinder to cut this because we got the space and it's gonna make quick work of that. We're gonna cut it right where the eye meets the push rod. We're gonna cut it right here. So, let's do it. Alright, there we go, that was easy. Looks like we gotta grind it down some. I don't think it matters which way you can put this on because it can spin. The push rod's actually, technically it's not removable, but when you get a new master cylinder, the push rod is separate from the master cylinder and you actually press it in. It's held in with a, like a snap ring. And I've seen guys use like pens that you cut in half and you can slide it in between over here and actually pop the push rod out. We did it this way so we didn't have to do that. But all that's to say that it doesn't it's not gonna hurt it if we spin the push rod. Because it's not one unit with the clutch master piston. Looks like for us the uh, lock screw hex size is a three millimeter. That's solid. Now we should be good to get the master back in. We do need to get this stiffener bracket installed back in. Alright, there we go. Now we should need to go from the inside. It's real tight in here, so I won't film it, but all I'm going to do is just uh, put that stiffener bracket back in, tighten up the nuts, and we'll call it good on that. Then we'll get the swing arm in and adjust it. All right, Clutch Master is bolted solid. I did a little bit of cleanup on the swing arm, just so that it's flat. So what we're going to do is we are going to set this on, put the nut on loosely, then we're going to bolt the heim joint onto this part of the swing arm, we're going to tighten it down all the way and then we're going to set the swing arm just so that everything is at neutral position because our push rod length has more than likely changed. We could have gotten crazy before and made sure everything was the exact same length and that would have made it easier maybe especially if we kept this in place and somehow took it out and somehow took the stud out without having to remove the swing arm. But this will work too. So we're just going to set it on there, bolt the heim joint on. Then we're gonna snug down the then we're gonna snug down the swing arm nut. Alright, everything is tightened up. You see the ham joint there? Tighten up the thing. I've gotta put the neutral safety switch connector back in, but just see how much less free play there is. That feels normal compared to how it was before. So we should get probably at least a half inch more of travel on the clutch. So I'm guessing our downshifts into second, which I know on these rigs, it's a pretty common issue for that to grind on these rigs with these transmissions. So it's not a huge deal, but I think we're probably gonna be able to do it now without issue when we're going, you know, a little bit quicker than we, maybe we should be. Uh, let's take it out for a drive and make sure everything's feeling good. All right, let's see if it'll downshift. Second at all. Go forward, going to 
second upshifting, no problem. first though let's see if it's, if I really get the clutch a lot if it'll still grind in the second up shifting yeah we probably messed up the clutch I probably should have just not even touched it just done the linkage Alrighty, here's our new clutch assembly. I don't know if I talked about it before, but um, we sprung for the whole assembly because it comes pre-bled and with a new master and slave, which I just checked. It was full of fluid. You see I didn't get the cap on all the way, so it's leaking. <clears throat> so this should be a pretty easy install. We'll just, uh, you know, pop the master back out and bolt the slave. We will go ahead and put our heim joint on here, because why not? And see how she does. Alright, I'm going to start with the master, pop that out. It's miserable working under there. You guys have seen me do it before. So I'm not going to film it this time. I'll bring you back once it's out. Alright, clutch master's out. Now we're going to move down to the slave. It looks like we're also going to have to unbolt the line from the firewall way back there. That will cross that bridge when we get there. Alright, so it looks like the uh, slave cylinder is just held on with this metal clip. So I think we're just going to pry the clip out and the slave should just pop out once the clip is out of the way. Slave cylinder is off and just out of interest I popped the boot off. Whoops. Looks like we may have had a small leak. You can see the grime building up there. Hard to say if that's just grease or if that's a leaking seal and it's brake fluid that's just accumulated dirt and grime. Hard to say. Looks like for the uh, firewall connection for the hydraulic line, it's just a Phillips head. It'll focus. So I'm just gonna get a stubby um, Phillips and just shove it back there and take it off, hopefully. Alrighty, I ended up taking off the air cleaner to get better access. There's two clips holding it on. The one is way down there. Hydraulic line's free, so now we gotta figure out how to fish this thing out. Not a huge area down there. I guess we'll try starting off by pulling the slave up. We're gonna probably need to hop up and help it up. What ended up working best is I fished the line over in between the valve cover here and the firewall. It was tight, but I got it to fit somehow. Now we just need to, you know, fish it through all these lines. I'm just gonna set you guys up on the stand while I fish this through. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see if I can get it in the same place that we needed it in. So, all right, let's do it. All right, I got the slave stone to run. And uh, let me tell you, that's not a fun job. The uh, piston wants to extend because there's a spring in there, obviously, and it's pretty dang strong. It came with the uh, plastic strap that went around, but it's too long. It's like here, we need it to be down here, fully retracted. So it really doesn't help that much. So basically, you just have to like push it in with superhuman strength and like ruin your thumb pad. My thumb is so sore right now. Pushing that in and shoving it under there. After many tries and much frustration, I was able to get it on. Jeez, do not want to do that again. So now we just gotta make sure our lines are in approximately the right place and we can get the master cylinder in. Bends in this master cylinder seem to be, well not master cylinder, hydraulic lines seem to be slightly different from the factory ones. So I think we're just gonna let it lie like that. It should be okay. Once we have everything bolted down, if we have any rubbing, we'll um, zip tie some line over any potential rub through spots. Before we get the master cylinder in, let's slide our neutral safety switch on. I don't actually know if it needs to go in before or after, but might as well do it now. So, just so we're safe. And I think 
we may have found our culprit on the water or on the uh, air intrusion into the system. See how it's all rusty in there? Looks like brake fluid's been leaking in from by the looks of it, so good to see that. Well, now we got a new one, it's good to see that. Alright, let's go slide this on. Alright, master cylinder's bolted up, and you can see that difference I was talking about in the firewall. A little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, so let's get our rod cut down and put the hind joint on it, and then stick it in and test it out, I guess. Got our new clutch shaft ground down. Heim joint, it's still really hot, but heim joint fits. So we'll get the set screw, you know, snugged up. Then I think we're ready to push her in and bolt her in. I'm going to start off by trying with the uh, CC switch on the shaft, and we'll push it in. And if it doesn't work, then we will take it off and put it on after. All right, shaft went on, no problem. You see it's on there. Only thing is, we're going to have to unbolt our swing arm and see how big of a difference there is. Apparently the old uh, push rod was quite a bit longer. So, no big deal. Although I am noticing now we have not very much uh, travel before we hit the safety switch. So, that's a little questionable. We may be uh, bypassing it. Hmm. All right, well, let's start off by taking the uh, swing arm out. All right, everything's bolted up, and you can see the safety switch is interfering, so I guess we are going to have to bypass it. Um, not really any way around that. So I'm going to pop it back off, and we'll figure out how we need to bypass it. I just went ahead and dismantled the switch and put a jumper in between the terminals. That'll let us start it up and drive it at least. Um, I'm kind of interested to see if the... Cruise control is still going to work because I would guess that it would not allow it to rev up if the clutch were depressed or else if you pressed in the clutch while the cruise control was on it would rev up. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But I mean we can't even test it until the speedo is fixed so no big deal. This will get us there for now. But it is a big improvement because it actually returns to the top. Alright so let's go ahead and test out the clutch. This is going to be the first drive at the clutch. Let's see how it does. The clutch does not seem to be releasing at all. See, clutch is fully down. Not happy. So, uh, I think part of it is I got the swing arm positioning wrong. You see how it sits below there? So, I'm going to change the swing arm position and we'll give her another go. Okay, I readjusted the clutch swing arm. You see she comes all the way back up, feels good. Really need to get a new swing arm. I think it was slipping, so I really tightened it on there. My shoulder still hurts a little bit, but uh, clutch all the way in, goes in reverse. Doesn't grind, goes into all the gears. So let's give that a go and see how she does. There's a little sneak peek on the RV, I guess. <laughs> Sounds like the belt's slipping a little bit. For the power steering. That's, it's squealing when I get it to the wheel lock. Well, it doesn't grind in a second anymore. Wheel alignment needs some adjustment. We'll see how she does along the road. Uh, I'm not really going to be able to film very well. But, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, report back and see how she does. Oh, look, Speedo works. Yahoo! Um, she downshifted into second without grinding, so that's a good sign. I think the clutch is about as good as we're going to get her. She's probably a little worn, you know. A clutch job in this thing's pretty easy. You just got to have a nice trans jack that'll hold up the heavy transmission. So yeah, Speedo works. That's a win for us on that one. Yep. All right, so we got the clutch all squared away on the Super Duty. It's not perfect, but I think it's about as good as it's gonna get for a worn out truck. The next time we're gonna be going through the ZF parking brake, which is just a nightmare job. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time.